fake news as a term goes back quite a while. Um, it was a term that was used during World War II. Uh, you can find it used quite frequently in the New York Times during the 40s. Um, but even before that, there were anxieties about radio as a media technology in which fake news uh, scandals became part of the public conversation. So Orson Welles, with his famed War of the Worlds broadcast, created widespread hysteria. And even before that, the humanists in the audience will appreciate this, if we think about the printing press as a media technology, we think about the 15th century and publications of astrological manuals, there were actually widespread panics in European cities caused by the assumption that there was going to be widespread flooding caused by the conjunction of particular stars. Now in our own era, with computational media and more sophisticated technologies, what kinds of fake news might we experience? Well, we can think about this in the most dystopian possible way. Given this audio as input. It's been less than a week since the deadliest mass shooting in American history. Our method produces the following output. It's been less than a week since the deadliest mass shooting in American history. And foremost in all of our minds has been the loss and the grief felt by the people of Orlando. Here's the ground truth video of Obama saying the same words. Especially our friends who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender. I visited with the families of many of the victims on Thursday. And one thing I told them is that they're not alone. The American people and people all over the world are standing with them, and we always will. The video that you're looking at on the right was generated using sophisticated algorithms that match Obama's enunciation, gestures, expressions, that use computer animation, 3D computer animation, drawing from a database of previous clips of Obama giving his weekly addresses in order to manufacture something that never happened. The French philosopher Jean Baudrillard warned that we might be increasingly likely to live in a world of simulation, what he called a world in which there were copies for which there were no originals. <laughs> 